From the Purpose of Christmas by Rick Warren, Christmas is a time to celebrate that God is for you. The phrase for you is used often in the Bible. For instance, when Jesus met people, first words to them were often a question. What do you want me to do for you? When Jesus instituted communion, he said, this is my body, which is given for you. St. Paul said, if God is for us, who can be against us? When you're facing a personal attack, it is great to have God with you. But it is even greater to know he is for you. Many people feel that God is secretly out to get them, that he is constantly playing a game of gotcha and just waiting for them to mess up and fail so he can say, I told you so. They imagine God as some kind of sadistic, cosmic grouch who enjoys frustrating our plans and is always looking for ways to criticize, judge, or get even with us. But God himself says otherwise. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. No one wants what's best for you more than God. No one knows better what will make you truly happy. God doesn't want you to be afraid of him. He wants you to run to him, not from him. In fact, 365 times in the Bible, God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's one. Fear not for every day of the year. So what are you afraid of? None of us knows what we'll face this next year. But we can know that God loves us. God is with us. And God is for us. One plus God is a majority in any situation. So where does our fear of God come from? Primarily two sources. A guilty conscience and ignorance of what God is really like. The Bible says there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Guilt makes us insecure. Fear not. Have you ever noticed that some people get extremely nervous any time anyone mentions God or Jesus in a conversation? I've seen people have an instant visceral rea reaction at the mention of Jesus. Instinctively, their stomachs, faces, and muscles all tighten up with a fight-or-flight response. Maybe you felt yourself react that way and wondered why. Adrenaline starts rushing through your veins. One common reason is that we all carry secret, hidden guilt from things we've done wrong, and we feel ashamed of ways we've acted and treated others. Assuming that God is mad at us and that he's going to scold us for all the ways we've fallen short, we seek to avoid even talking about him. But God is not mad at you. He is mad about you, Jesus said. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. If you study the life of Jesus, you'll quickly see that when you make a mistake, Jesus doesn't rub it in. He rubs it out. He came to erase all your sins, mistakes, failures, and regrets. That's why the first statement the angel made to the shepherds was, do not be afraid. Jesus came to save us, not to scare us. It's a reason to celebrate.